Now, one of the things that I want to talk about today is watercolour paper. There's a quite a variety of different types of watercolour paper out there from hot pressed, cold pressed and rough. But there's also different manufacturers as well. And you find different brands of paper perform differently as well when you're putting washes on. Some take quite a lot of washes, some don't take quite as many washes. Some, So it's a variety of things. It's different. You've got to try different ones out and see how they perform. Sometimes what you can do is get a sample pack from the manufacturer uh, for different types of uh, watercolour paper which they produce and, uh, and see what they can do and then you can have a play with those. Or if you've got friends out there that have a different type of brand, a different brand of watercolour paper, do a swap. Swap a sheet each and just see how you get on. Now, I'll give you an idea. I haven't got any rough paper but this is a, a, a not texture and all that basically means when it's not means it's not hot pressed okay so when it's all produced and goes through the rollers it's gone through cold rollers so therefore the paper has got a bit of a texture to it I'll just show you what I mean so if I get some paint on my brush and you see there's a little bit of texture see that just kind of grazing the texture of the paper using the side of the brush so that's what you can use for effects as well by having a slightly textured paper so that's a not surface now the thing about papers as well is that it's not just a not surface you can get the hot press which is very very smooth i'll show you that was in a minute and uh, and also you can get the really rough, rough papers which can give you a, a very rough effect uh, if you kind of very lightly graze over the surface so i'll give you some ideas on the types of paper you can buy but as I mentioned, there's also a variety of different manufactured ones out there. So I'll just show you the ones I've got here a minute. So we'll start off with Aquarelle, which is this one, which is a Canson one, as you can see. And this one, I've not even tried this one yet. This is a different one, but it's a smoother texture, but it's not cold, it's not hot press, sorry. It's a smoother textured paper, even though it's a not surface. So you say it's cold pressed on there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So, uh, but it's a different surface again, even though it's the same type of thing. So that's one. The other one, which you can buy from the budget shops as well, is a Dale Rowney version, another good manufactured name as well. And this is a 300 gram, it's uh, £140, so it's a reasonable thickness. The thing with paper as well is the weights. So when you look at something like this, £140 or 300 gram, it's a reasonable thickness, but you still need to stretch it if you're going to put the entire sheet, like I did with this one here, as a wash colour, because you'll then find that the paper will obviously cockle as it goes. Okay, so that's that kind of thing, and this is again a different surface once once again. So it's amazing how they all vary in quality and surfaces. And the other one I've got, as I drop that one on the floor, is this one. Now this is a hot press paper. So as you can see, on this one, do I? You better see it on the camera just about. If I just move it around just a little bit, this one here is cold pressed, and this is hot pressed. So it's really, really smooth. So that'll give us some ideas on how that works. Let me just get that one out of the way. Hot press paper, cold press paper, and rough paper. So that'll give us some ideas on what to look for on the market. And just remember, the thicker the paper, the less chance it will have of cockling when it goes all wet. So I hope you like that, and I'll talk to you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now. If you'd like to see more watercolour painting tips, head to patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist and you'll see my full list of step-by-step -step video tutorials on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. Where you get also the project photo, the outline drawing for that month's project as well, and even a step-by-step -step handwritten or hand-typed by me full PDF on that particular current month's project. So come and join me and let's get painting together. And don't forget to click on like, subscribe and share. And please leave a comment down below as well. I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts and find out what you've been up to on your painting ventures. So until next time, bye bye for now.